Hello everyone, it's Benny, and welcome back to the 3D Software Rendering Tutorial Series. Last time, we managed to get a whole bunch of dots on screen that look like they're actually in 3D space, and we talked about why that works. But that only works for dots. How can we possibly get a solid fill shape on screen? And... The best way to do this is to start by just taking a step back. Let's step out of 3D land for a moment. And let's just focus on 2D. In 2D space, how can we possibly draw a solid filled shape? I'm not talking about a rectangle fill. I mean a, well, a mostly arbitrary solid filled shape. I'll talk more about that in a moment. And as it turns out, there's this blindingly fast algorithm that also happens to be quite simple that can do that. And unfortunately, to this very day, I still don't know the exact name of the algorithm, and I just can't find it. The best candidate I've heard is scan conversion rasterization. I think that might be what it's called, but I could be wrong about that. Feel free to correct me, because I'm really not completely sure on the name of this algorithm. But that's exactly what it does. It fills mostly arbitrary 2D shapes well, with solid color, and it does it blindingly fast. And here's just briefly how that works. It's really not that complicated. So you have your image. Here's an 8x8 image. Here's your coordinates. goes 0 to 8, etc., etc. Same stuff you've seen all the time. Now, in scan conversion rasterization, you have this thing called a scan buffer, which looks something like this. It has two values for every Y coordinate in your image. It doesn't have to be Y, but it's typically Y. And these two values store a minimum and maximum value. And that means minimum and maximum X value. So I think you might be starting to see how this works. It's Again, it's a pretty simple algorithm. But the idea is, you'll fill the min and max x values using, well, with whatever you're interested in. It, it depends on what you're doing, but let's say it ends up being this for some reason. These are the minimum and maximum x values on every y, well, row of pixels that you're interested in. And from there, you just go through row by row and scan out the pixels. So this one, I don't have anything. I don't care about this row. So I'm starting on this row. So, 0, 1, 2. Starting on 2, and then going 3, 4, 5, and 6 is outside the range, so I stop there. Same thing for the next row. For the next row, 0, 1, so start there. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Seven's outside, and so forth and so on. You're just going through, scanning out each row of pixels, until you reach the end of, well, at least the end of the part of the scan buffer that you're interested in. And then, as you see, now you have a solid filled shape. So just by setting the minimum and maximum values properly, you can define lines, you can define really almost anything. Again, I'll talk more about that in a moment. For all intents and purposes, I'm going to say this works for convex shapes. Technically, that's not true. Technically, the limitation is it works for anything that's monotone to a vertical line. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Gotta love how technical that sounds, but that's a technical limitation. But for all intents and purposes, it works for convex shapes. And fortunately, that's all we need. Again, I'll talk more about that in a moment. But yeah, that's how this algorithm works. Let's go ahead and get implementing. Now, I went ahead and did something off screen. I created this render context class, which inherits from Bitmap. And pretty much, I just changed my display to use that. So now it has a render context for the frame buffer, and that's a new render context. And now main is using, well, a render context target rather than a bitmap target, so so forth and so on. That's I just went ahead and did that because you can go away. Because render context is now going to have some data that we don't need for most bitmaps. In this case, that's the scan buffer. So I'm going to have a private final int array, and it's, I'm going to call m scan buffer. And I'm going to initialize that to a new int array of height times 2. 
because we need two values for every y-coordinate. And I'm going to create two temporary functions just to show you how this works. One's going to be public void, going to be called draw scan buffer, sure. It's going to take in some int y-coordinate and some int x-min and int x-max, because that's how this thing works, after all. It's storing some minimum x and maximum x value to each y-coordinate. And guess how this is going to work? It's pretty simple. So y chord times 2 equals x min. And I'm going to say y chord times 2 plus 1 equals x max. So I'm sort of packing this kind of like I did. I'm packing the ABGR pixels in the bitmap. Only real difference is this one has two values rather than four. So there you go. Oh, and it only cares about height, not width and height. But other than that, yeah. And finally, public void fill shape is going to fill some shape that's been drawn in the scan buffer. So it's going to take an int y min and int y max. And I'm not going to take in a color for now. We're eventually going to change everything to just draw arbitrary textures in this, so I'm just going to hard code a color for now. We'll worry about specifying stuff like that later. So, for int, sure, j equals y min j is less than y max, so, and j plus plus. So we're just going through every single one. And what are we going to do? Well, we're going to get an x min value, which is scan buffer sub, well, j times 2, and an x max, which, guess what? Scan buffer j times 2 plus 1, because that's how we, that's how we stored it in draw scan buffer. I, and then i equals 0, i is less than, wait, i equals x min, excuse me, i is less than x max, i plus plus. Guess what? Yeah, we're just going to draw a pixel at i comma j. Like I said, I'm going to hard code a color for now, so I'm just going to hard code zero perfect pure white, just because it's something to hard code. And sure. There we go. So with that, that's really all there is to it. As you see, very, very simple algorithm, and its simplicity is really its big strength. It's both easy to implement, and it's very, very fast because of that. So yeah, so let's go ahead and test this out. I'm going to go to display, and wait, not display, main. And rather than, yeah, let's not draw the stars anymore. So now we should just have, well, first off, I'm going to do target.clear with byte 0x00. Zero zero zero. So this way we'll just clear to black. We should see absolutely nothing at this point. Okay, good. Now I'm going to take... I'm going to start taking advantage of those new functions. So I'm going to say j equals 0, j is less than... Oh well, sure, j equals 100, j is less than 200, j plus plus. Why not? Just... I'm just doing something arbitrary, doesn't matter. I'm going to say draw scan buffer. Now it takes a y coordinate, that's j. And for x min, hmm. I'm going to say x min is j, and x max, actually x min, okay, how about this? x min is 300 minus j, x max is 300 plus j. So, yeah, that's how this is going to work. And, yeah, this will fit in the screen, so that should be good. Then at the end, after we draw on that, all we have to do is say target, fill shape, this is in the range of 100 to 200. So there, that should just go ahead and draw like a trapezoid. There you go. So now we can fill arbitrary, solid 2D shapes. And it's really simple, and it's really fast. But that still doesn't quite solve our problem. Yeah, we can fill 2D shapes really quickly, but... What about 3D stuff? How can we draw a 3D shape very fast? Right now, we still only have points. And here's the trick to that. So, right now, we can make points look 3D, but not solid shapes. Right? Right. So all we need is a solid shape that is defined in terms of points. Why? Because then if we take some 3D points and draw the shape with it, 
the shape itself will look 3D. It's defined in terms of those 3D points. There you go, it's that simple. So what shape do we choose? Well, the obvious choice, as I hinted at in the last video, is the 2D simplex, also known as the triangle. Why on earth would we use a triangle? Well, the 2D simplex has the fewest possible points of a solid shape, which is, is 3. So that's nice, that means we don't need 10 million points to make a shape. But also, the 2D simplex is completely flat in 3D space, which is nice, as we'll see later. And, more importantly, you can define any arbitrary 2D shape using the 2D simplex, or using several of the 2D simplex. And that's useful because, well, our scan conversion rasterization algorithm does not draw all possible 2D shapes. So, if we decompose everything into triangles, we effectively can, then, draw all possible 2D shapes. So that solves that problem. So triangles are really nice and really awesome. But how can we draw them with the scan conversion rasterization algorithm? Are we going to have to do some magic with the scan buffer? Or is there a way we can ham our way through things? Find out next time on the 3D Software Rendering Tutorial Series. Thank you, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and I'll see you then.